Good morning, good morning. How are we all this morning? Oh, nice, yeah, cool. Like eight of us are really excited to be here. Would you like to stand if you're able to? You know, you, you've, uh, we've gathered this morning as priests. We've gathered as worshipers. We've gathered to, to bring our worship, to bring our offering to the Lord and worship Him. So are you excited to be here? Are you excited? Eight of us again. You know, the psalmist says in Psalm 57, Awake my soul to sing. Awake my soul. You know, if you say you have to awake something, it means it's prone to falling asleep. So this morning, I wonder if you can gather with me. Close your eyes. Do whatever you need to do to give him your full, undivided attention. Guys, time for talking to each other. That time is gone and it will come back in a minute. But right now, we're here to sing. We're here to worship him. Awake my soul. Awake my soul. Awake my soul. Lord, we're gathered to worship. Any part of us that's feeling a bit sleepy this morning, any part of us that's feeling a bit divided this morning, any part of us that feels like we're here for a million reasons, we just surrender right now. God, we're here for you. Awake my soul. Maybe you want to just say that with me. Lord, awake my soul. Awake my soul. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, awake my soul. There is a sound. I love to hear it's the sound of the Savior's robe as he walks into the room where people pray, where we hear praises, he hears faith. sound of the Savior's robe as he walks into the room where people pray, where we hear worship, he hears faith. Praise a lot. Sing that again. 
the lead of the children and make a loud, loud, loud noise to the Lord. Unashamed, unrestrained praise, undignified worship. stone to wake as a child he became like the least of us behold Jesus son of God Messiah the lamb the roaring lion oh be still behold him the 
Just that
the shadow in the heart, the ransom for my heart. Oh, he's my soul. You are good. Yes, you are good. Yes, you are good. there is a river of God to jump into and I don't know if like me you're waiting and have been waiting for God to move right 
in an area of life, one or more areas. While we were praying this morning and, and this scripture was kind of mentioned and it just jumped into my heart, I've been wrestling with it. But in Ezekiel 47, a prophetic picture of what God's doing and wants to do. And it says that he took him out of the east gate from the temple and there was water to go into. And they measured a thousand cubits and it was ankle high. And he took him another thousand cubits and it was knee high. Likewise, which took it to waist high. And then it was at a depth too deep to cross on foot. One that you could just jump into and go with the flow. And in that verse five, he says, son of man, do you see this? How many know it's easy to not see something that God's doing and wants to do right close to us? And I really believe this morning that there is a depth to enter into as we've been pushing in, worshiping our King. You know that thousand cubits is approximately 530 meters. There is a movement. And perhaps if we want God to do something that he's never done, we might need to be do, to do something we've never done to trigger it. So here's who's willing to do something slightly crazy this morning. In faith and prophetically. So what I'm going to ask you to do is there is a sense of movement. The river's nearby. People are on holiday right now. And those that enter into the sea and go from ankle high to knee high, that's cold. And that's painful, right? And I believe God wants us to jump in. There is a river for you. Because at that place where it's too high to cross and it's moving, it says there the river brought life wherever it went. There were trees that produced fruit, which is your provision. Leaves that brought healing, which is your breakthrough health-wise or mentally. There were fishermen on either side. Those are the people God has got in your life, ready to schedule in for you to bless and to be a blessing to you. But I believe God's saying to us this morning, would you shift just somehow, just some way to move into that river because son of man, do you see it? Do you see it? And I really believe you're nearby this morning. So as we go back into God is good and you are never gonna let me down, I'm gonna encourage you to do something slightly different. That seat that you're in now, which maybe you've been in for the past eight years, how about as we now go back into worship, how about moving, not a thousand cubits, 530 meters, but somewhere, maybe nearby, maybe crazily to another part of the auditorium for this next part, to say, Lord, I'm moving. I'm gonna go from where I am to jump into that river that you have for that breakthrough in my life or that person or community that I'm believing for. Who's with me? Come on, who's with me? God wants us to respond this morning. There is a movement, there is a shift that I believe he wants. And he's saying, will you come from ankle high to that place where the river is flowing? So let's sing, let's sing, let's worship our God. I'm jumping over here, guys, let's go, come on. Sing, let the king, let the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails, the anchor, the anchor in the waves. Oh, he is my song. Let the King of my heart be the fire inside my veins, the echo of my days. Oh, He is my song. And again, let the King of my heart be the wind inside my sails, the anchor in the waves. Oh, He is my song. Let the King of my heart be the fire. Inside my veins, the echo of my days, oh, he is my song. Cause you are good, good, oh, yes, you are good, good, oh, yes, you are good, good, oh. Yes, you are good. 
is so faithful to us, isn't he? Let's just lift your hands to heaven if where you are, if you can. If you can physically lift your arms, just close your eyes and just say, thank you for your faithfulness. But when we sang, your goodness is running after me, I don't like putting the onus back on me. I love to sing to him. I'm all about vertical. But there is something that really glorifies him when we acknowledge that our God is so good. He is a good God. He is faithful. He's faithful to his promises. He's faithful to everything in his word that he said he will do. He's not a God that changes his mind about you when you're having a bad day. He just loves you so much. He loves me so much. And he's so faithful. He's the God that answers prayer. There's a scripture, I can't remember the address, but even while we're yet speaking, he's answering. That's the kind of God he is. For those whose hearts are fully devoted to him, he's got us. He's so good. Thank you, Lord. You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let us down, no. You're never gonna let, never gonna let us down. Cause you're so powerful. Cause you're all powerful. Cause you're almighty God. Cause you're all powerful. You're almighty God. You're all powerful. You're almighty God, almighty God. We glorify you, we glorify your name. We magnify you in our minds, in our mouths, in our hearts. We glorify you in our minds, in our mouths, in our hearts. You are great, the greatness of God. We magnify you. You're so much greater than we know. You're so much greater than we know. Thank you, Jesus.
Stay standing if you can. Stay in this place. I'm going to ask Emma to come up very quickly. Um, we need to pray. And just as we're in this precious place of pushing into God's great goodness, we want his goodness to extend even deeper and wider to somebody real nearby. Hi, everyone. There are too many Emma's in this church. You can tell. Um, so my name's Emma. I work in the community here. Um, and as some of you will know, a, a young person sadly passed away last Sunday evening uh, in Bradstock. And I just wondered if you would lift your hands with me and pray for that community. Father God, thank you that you are good, that you are here, and that even before I speak, you are answering. I pray for the community of Bradstock. I pray for everyone there whose hearts have been touched and moved by what's happened. Lord, I pray for your peace, for your presence, for your almighty power to be moving there. I pray that you'll be with families, with, with the adults as they respond. I pray that you'll be with the professionals as they, they do their work to support that community. And Lord, most of all, I pray for our young people. I pray that your healing hand will be on them. And I pray that our hearts will go with the community of Bradstock as with yours. Thank you, God, for everything you do, will do, and have done. Amen. Thank you. Let's keep praying for the community of Radstock. Guys, should we just give it up for our amazing worship team who helped lead us into God's presence today? the team at the back who do such a great job. Thank you guys. You're incredible. Let's stay centered as we take our seats, everybody. joy to um, give ourselves to the Lord in worship and adoration. He is worthy of way much more than we can ever give him, of course, and um, because he gave himself for us. Isn't it amazing that our Father in heaven, he wanted a family, so he donated his son. He gave Jesus so he could have a family. And we're now a part of that because of his goodness. And in some small way, as we give our lives back to him as a life of worship, we have opportunities to give in so many ways, don't we? Because to the least of these that you give a cup of water to, you give unto me, he says. And I want to encourage you as we would like to receive the tithes and offerings for you to come before God and see how he might have you respond. When you give, you're giving to his kingdom to help further his work here and beyond and support those that do it. And so as you can see, the best way is to, to give online or via text giving with the details on the screen. What a joy to give to help grow his kingdom. Well, we want to pray for our children. Who loves our children in the house? Woo! We're all children of God, and some of us children of God have children here. And they're going to have a great time at their meetings this morning. Our youth are taking a chill pill over the summer, so they're not meeting. But our kids are, and we've got fabulous children's ministry with blessed workers who are going to um, take them deeper in the Lord this morning to accompany your work as parents. So children, get ready to go, but let's pray that you have an amazing time. Father, thank you for every one of these. Jesus, you said to your team, don't stop them from coming to me. And Lord, as we send them on their way upstairs or downstairs this morning, we know you are there to meet with them. And I pray open eyes, open hearts, 
and open the windows of heaven above them so they may meet with you even more. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being there. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, guys, I was in the cinema um, the other night. It was date night with the wife, and we went to watch a movie. And the cinema that we went to, it kind of likes to pride itself on saying, this is not a cinema. This is an opera. This is a sports venue. And I'm there thinking, oh, I thought I was coming to the cinema. But actually, when we meet, I'd like to say this isn't just a church meeting. This is where we get to meet with Jesus and where we get to meet with one another. And so I'm going to encourage you to do that just for a few minutes um, before we get into God's word. So how about meeting somebody you haven't spoken to for a while or even better, somebody new. Okay, so let's meet somebody. You are so welcome here this morning, particularly newcomers. We'll talk about that in a moment. But find somebody and chat to them for a couple of minutes. Okay, everybody, I know you love one another. 
but could you now start loving one another silently? Return back to that new seat you found this morning. So good to fellowship. Hope you met somebody new. Go for coffee with them. Invite them home. Do life. Well, on the subject of new, obviously, big welcome to the church family. But if you are here for the very first time as a visitor, that you've just come in off the street or you're traveling and visiting um, or just checking out, this home, which is just a part of what God's doing in the city, of course. A huge welcome to you. My name's Grant, and um, we've got an amazing team here who are here to serve and support you. Um, and if you are brand new, I want to encourage you to see this. Now, obviously, if you're just popping in and you have a home church somewhere else, great to have you with us. But go back there and serve and worship and give God and that family your best. But if you're here because you're thinking, do you know, I've been coming a while, um, but because of COVID or whatever, I've not really connected in and I sense God wants me to connect here. I want to encourage you to grab one of these if you are in that space and that place. And we've got a team here who I think have got some of these. So if you would like a new here and you'd like a bit more information um, to tell you about how we do our thing as a family in this city, could you please wave and our amazing team would get one of these to you. So put your hand up, wave nice and high. It would be a joy to put one of these into your hand. Big welcome, everybody. There's somebody else down here. I can just about see. There's a few hands waving at me at the back. God bless you. Great to see you. And there's loads more information, including some next steps about how you can check out what we believe, how we do our thing here. Awesome. Well, a few notices before I invite um, Jenny up to get us into God's Word. And um, you will have noticed on the way in this lovely banner, which has a QR code. Um, but we are really keen to extend an invitation for you to say, count me in. We've just done a sports camp and outreach with kids. And our curriculum theme for the week was pick me. And we were saying, choose to be chosen because God chooses you. Well, to grow the influence of God's kingdom through what he's called us to do here, the fields are ripe, the workers are few. And so could you add your anointing, your gifting, your servant heart to what we're doing? We're looking. We've still got some spaces around the production team, around hospitality, around the catering team. Um, and so you can just scan uh, outside. You could scan using your phone that QR code, and that will give you information for you to look at areas that you could serve. And we would love to have you on board, okay? So that we can give that on to the Action Pantry, uh, which is based in Swerton, and it's a way of helping families in real need at this time, um, which is going to get tougher, isn't it, in the natural? So um, wouldn't it be great if each Sunday we were able to all drop something into that basket to help somebody else? So I want to encourage you to think if you can do that. Today... We've got tea and coffee um, in the auditorium afterwards. So if you don't need to rush off, come and continue that conversation. You started with that person. Meet somebody new um, or receive some prayer. Brilliant. Well, what a joy this morning to have um, Jenny Nedeshenko sharing with us. Here is an anointed woman of God who's carrying something that I know God wants us to hear and receive and act on. So join me in welcoming about this gift to the body of Christ. Lord, would you speak? We know you've spoken to Jenny. Thank you for now speaking through Jenny. Give us ears to hear what you're saying and hearts to respond to whatever that is. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, right, we'll see what God does this morning. Um, uh, I'd like to just start with um, a dream I had about, I think it's about five years ago. Um, it was just, it was the summer after I came off staff 
here. And um, it's really a follow-up um, of uh, what was said a little bit earlier about the river of God. And I think it's applicable to us today as a church. In the dream, um, I was in somewhere that was a bit like uh, Wembley Stadium. So imagine a big stadium. And in the middle of the stadium was a round platform. And John Arnott, how many of you know John Arnott or have heard of him? Um, he and his wife stewarded the move of God in Toronto from 1994. And he was speaking on the platform. And instinctively in my dream, I knew that we were in Bath City Church as it was then. Life Church Bath now. And up in the gods somewhere, in another room in this stadium, was Heidi Baker, uh, who was about to speak at the same time. And I was looking around, and number one, I was surprised by the lack of people who were there. And number two, I was really surprised by the distraction that was going on in the dream. People were eating, drinking, having conversations. And in my dream, I remember um, feeling, do they not know who they have speaking? Do, know, do they not know that... It's John, and he stewarded one of the greatest moves of God in our lifetime that has impacted the world, churches globally. And there was a bit of like, I, I can't believe this. Do they not know? I then, it, you know, there's no sort of time or element in dreams. It's, it's all a bit random. But in the dream, I went, to, I just thought, oh, you know what, I think I'm going to go and listen to Heidi Baker. So I went up to Heidi Baker's room, and I was um, sitting in the room. Again, the same kind of distraction. And at the same time, Heidi and I heard John say, begin to pray, Lord, let it rain. Let your presence come. Let it rain. Let it rain with your presence. Um, Heidi immediately stopped what she was saying, and she went down to join John on the platform. And at the same time, I thought, well, if she's gone, I'm going. And then what happened in the dream I, I, is I actually walked through those doors um, watching them on the platform. It was the same thing, Lord, let it rain. And as I came, started walking down, I saw water seeping up from the ground here. It wasn't a torrent. It wasn't rushing. It was almost just coming up through the ground. And in my dream, I was, I was like, you know, when you can't see, you think, am I seeing that or is it in the spirit? Am I physically seeing that or am I seeing something in the spirit? That was what I was, I was kind of looking in my dream. And there were some kids playing in it, splashing around. Um, still the same kind of distraction going on in the seats. And I probably came to around here in my dream, and I put my foot in, and I realized it was water. It was the river of God. And I think I took once, I took two steps, and I suddenly realized if I take my next step, I will go in over my head. And I had a frizzen of fear. It was almost like, I'm not going to go wade in. 
over my head. If I take the next step, I will be out of my depth. Now, I love swimming, I do scuba diving, I love water sports, all of that. So for me to experience, uh, oh my gosh, I'm going to go in over my head is not normal for me. But in, uh, in my dream, I felt it. I then took my step and I literally went down. The water went over my head and I came up. This is all in my dream. And I came up with my arms out like this. crying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. And I actually woke myself up because I was shouting it in my dream. I <laughs> hit Paul over the head, <laughs> woke him up. <clears throat> he went back to sleep. And I started sobbing because of the holiness of God. I believe that we're in a time where the water is beginning to seep up. But we have to be able to see it. Because sometimes we look to the past and we think God came in that way. So if he's coming, he will come in that way. Which for me, having been in Toronto on staff in the early years, was incredible. It was incredible seeing what God did and the presence of God in the meetings. Absolutely astounding. I feel that during lockdown, so the past two to three years, there's been a tectonic shift in the spirit realm. We know that there has been in the world. We are encountering all sorts of things. Um, COVID that literally shut the world down, certainly shut travel down, people in lockdown. N never has that happened globally before. There, there have been plagues, but not in a way that has shut the world down. And I have, I have sensed that over the last two to three years, it might be longer than that, that the tectonic plates have been shifting in the spirit. And all I can say is it's not same old, same old. Please don't go back to the same old. We, we need to get ourselves ready to be able to see with our spiritual eyes what is God doing. I also know that a lot of the major prophetic words have been about an incoming of people that don't know Jesus yet. How many of you have heard that? that the next wave is not going to be a move of God, which I believe was preparation, by the way. It was getting our hearts right. It was cleaning our hearts up. It was us realizing who the Father is, who Jesus is, who the Holy Spirit is. But we need to be ready to embrace people that come through the door. Or... Meet Jesus in the workplace or in the place that you are. How many of we us feel ready for that? Do you know how to give an account of who Jesus is? Do you know how to disciple people? In our terminology, it might be mentoring. Do you know how to journey with people that meet Jesus and don't really know who he is? 
I personally think it's really important because my opinion is if that kind of wave of salvations is coming, they won't all fit in this building. I can tell you right now, they won't fit in this building. And you will need to journey with people so they don't get lost along the way. I believe it's a season for us to get our spiritual eyes open. Where is the person in front of you at? We don't need to preach the gospel. We need to love them into the kingdom. Not everybody is going to be holy the minute they come through the door, metaphorically. We need to understand the greatness and the powerful love of what Jesus did for us on the cross. It covers all our sins. He covers all of us. He covers my failings. He covers my sinful nature. He covers me when I get it wrong. He also covers me when I get it right. God is a holy God. There's no way of getting around that. Somebody once challenged us. This is when I was on staff at the School of Ministry in Toronto. Um, we had a, p a specific speaker come and talk to us about the presence of God. He was somebody that had suffered from um, mental health, schizophrenia, schizophrenia, manic depression. I can't remember the list of things. And the Lord healed him just like that. But what he, he told me later, um, he said, I keep my healing because I walk in the peace of Jesus. And he put this question out to the room. When you think of God, do you think of holiness or do you think of love? Is he a holy God or a God of love? And at the time, I literally was like, he's a holy God. Ask yourself that question. Is he a holy God or is he the God of love? What would your answer be? M my answer now, he is a God of love, but his love is holy. It's a, bit, it's a bit different. He is the God of holy love. And I don't believe that we as human beings actually fully comprehend what his holy love is like. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He was in the beginning. He created the heavens and the earth. He created the whole universe. And then us, Adam and Eve in the garden. Let us make man in our image. Do you know that we carry the full image of God? We have the capacity to carry his nature. But with that is his holy love. And the thing about a holy love is that anything that is not holy cannot exist in holy love which is why he sent Jesus. God is so concerned and passionate about having relationship with us 
but he knew we would never make it. There were all the rules and regulations given in the Old Testament to set aside a people for him that would be able to live in a holy way so that they could be in relationship with him. It was a guide for living. I love the book of Romans. It's a great legal explanation of the difference between living under law and living under the wonderful grace that Jesus has given us. I love the songs we sang this morning. I believe that each of us needs to know even deeper what it is like to walk in his holy love, allowing the Holy Spirit to deal with the things in our hearts that separate us. It's the enemy that brings condemnation. It's the kindness of God by his Holy Spirit that brings us to repentance. Nothing shall separate us from of the love of God. Nothing. Neither principalities nor powers. I can't remember where that scripture is, but it's a great scripture. Nothing shall separate us. But the thing is, we have access to that through Jesus because of what he did for us. You can't suddenly put that aside. That the Son, Scripture says in the beginning, John 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and He was God. And He created all things, and in, in Him and through Him all things are created, and He holds everything together. That's incredible. How, am I the only one that finds that absolutely extraordinary? that we worship a God who literally holds me together, my physical being, my cells, the way that he designed me, the, the floor, the ceiling, the atmosphere, everything physical, he made it. We, we exist because he created the heavens and the earth and us in his image. Let's not make God small in our eyes. <laughs> it's a privilege that we even know him. And do you know that everyone is searching for him? In the heart of man, and I don't care which nation we're born into, which faith we believe in. We are all searching for our creator. We are all searching for the heart of the Father, God, the Alpha and the Omega, creator of heaven and earth, because we are his image bearers. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. But I do believe everything leads to Jesus. All faith, all faiths are looking for God. Every faith will lead to Jesus because he's the door we go through. By the way, I didn't really mean to talk about this, so 
you know, I have a whole lot of wait notes of things I could have talked about. Should I read them out? Waiting on the promises of God, the kindnesses of God, our God as a consuming fire, Francis Frangipani, God's creation and the cross, the power of the cross. Because I didn't know what I was going to talk about. I do believe that we are in serious days. I mean, you just have to look around the world to see what's happening. And I believe that as a church or as people of God, we need to know our God. Scripture says, in the end days, some people will fall away. Some people will follow, you know, deceiving teaching. Some people will go cold. <laughs> there's, there's quite a lot of that, of what people will do in the end days. I don't think any of us want to be any of those people, right? I think we want to be hand in hand with God our maker, our creator, with Jesus our savior, with Holy Spirit who is our wisdom, our truth, our comforter, who raised Christ Jesus from the dead. We have a powerful Holy Spirit to help us walk with him. So let's not get cold in our hearts. I, I do believe God is calling us to stir up our, our expectation again. I don't know about you, but I, I was probably showing my age a little bit, but I, I was around in the house church movement. I was around in London when John Wimber, the vineyard teaching came. I, I was around in 94, I visited Toronto, I ended up on staff there for eight years. And over the last few days, few years, I've been like, Lord, there must be more than what we have. If this is all there is, I don't really know what to do with myself. Because I have seen the glory of God at work. I have seen people on their faces weeping in the presence of God. And not, not always because they're getting healed. Weeping because they're experiencing his holiness and his glory. There is no description that I believe we can give about that, what that is like. All I know is that when God showed me through various experiences that I don't really have time to go in. All I could do was lie on my face, sobbing my heart out at the grace of Jesus Christ. But I was saved. This is 20 years after I came to the Lord, by the way. We do need to know the combination of a holy love. You can't separate that out when we're talking about God. His love is holy. There's enough in the Old Testament and the New Testament where God says, I am a holy God. I long for my people to come back to me so that we can walk and talk face to face. How many of you 
And I'm actually not going to ask you to put your hands up. This is a question for yourself. But how many of you are so hungry for him that you would give up anything? I know I am. Because where I sit currently, if he is not worth it, I might as well just go and do my own thing. And there are a lot of things I could go and do. <laughs> How many of us, and don't put your hand up, this is a question to your own heart, how many of us have really counted the cost of following him? We sometimes talk a lot about the love of God. Jesus did say, first commandment, love the Lord your God with everything. Second commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. And I do believe profoundly that it's very important, number one, that we love him, and I'll come back to that. But number two, that we learn to love ourselves because he is correcting our original design. We grow up believing lies because we get hurt. The enemy's strategy is to take away our understanding of God's original design made in his image. We all need to know what that looks like. I am unique. My DNA is unique. And yet I fit in the image of God. So we all need to get healed up and allow the Holy Spirit to reestablish who am I. We all need to love our neighbor. Love conquers all. If you don't know it, I'm throwing a lot, a lot of scriptures out without referencing them. Love conquers all, 1 Corinthians 13. At the end of the day, love is basically what it's saying. Love is the most important thing or feeling. But I want to propose to you that we have to understand what God's holy love is before we can love others. Love the Lord your God with everything. I th I'm still working that out. Some days I feel like it's just blobbing, sobbing on the floor saying I love you. <laughs> But that doesn't get much done. <laughs> Sometimes I believe it's just loving the person in front of me that might think very differently to me, by the way. But if I can get to a place where I can step back into Jesus... and ask Jesus to love people through me, I think it's a pretty good position to be in. I actually asked him to come and stand behind me on the platform today. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. 
God loved us so much that he sent his only son who was with him at the beginning. He is the word. He created all things. We are held together by him and through him. And yet he gave up his status to come to this earth Because his created beings in, made in his image were in rebellion, basically. I'm summarizing. I am summarizing what this whole book talks about. Some people say, what is this book? Is it a history, history book? Yes. It has history in it. Is it a teaching book? Yes. It teaches us. Is it a story book? Absolutely. It's a story about God and his desire to walk with us. This, is it wisdom? Absolutely. Is it the word of God? It was inspired by him. Is it truth? Absolutely. Let's not change things about this word. It can guide us, it can teach us, but fundamentally it points us to Jesus. It points us to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. It points us to God, who is out of time and space. who created the heavens and the earth, actually the whole universe, and he's outside of that too. Let us never minimize who he is. And yet the profoundness is that it's us he loves. I find that profound. I feel like a little ant scurrying around sometimes. We make life too small. Did you know that you have a vital role in his purposes? You are uniquely designed. Only you can carry the message that he has put in you, which is encompassed by this. Did you know that only you will be able to reach certain people? Please don't step back and say, it's not my responsibility. There are people waiting for you to tell them how, God good, how good God is. Because only you know them. I think it's a privilege. You know, when I was in my 20s, so that would be um, quite a long time ago, <laughs> when I was a new Christian, let me put it that way, the thought of talking to anybody about Jesus freaked me out quite frankly. But for me, it's become easier and easier because I myself have begun to understand at a much deeper, more profound level how much he loves me how much he loves every human being on the earth because we are all created in his image. We are all created and designed for a relationship with him that is not superficial. He knows us intimately. Scripture says he knows all the thoughts. He knows all your thoughts. Sometimes we think things 
and then think God doesn't know about them. And then when we think he knows about them, we feel shamed. He knows it all anyway, by the way. I don't care what you're into. I don't care what you've done. I don't care what you think. <laughs> the beautiful thing, in my opinion, is he knows it all anyway. So don't hide from him anymore. Ask him for help. Ask for help. Don't run away from him. Don't hide. And let him begin to take hold of those places in us that bring separation from him. Because, by the way, our battle isn't against flesh and blood. It's against the demonic principalities and powers. And because of my journey, I decided some time ago that I would not partner with them. They come in subtle ways, by the way. I refuse to partner with the enemy. Does not mean I'm perfect. But what it means is I make decisions about what I talk about, how I talk about it, and to appropriate the blood of Jesus over my life. Because that hides me. His blood covers me. There is such a place of safety in living in under what Jesus has done for me. And it also means that I am able to hear almost anything, and I have heard a lot when people have come to talk to me one-on-one -on -one over the years. I've probably just heard about heard all of it. Some of it I won't even watch in films, put it that way. I, I, I'm careful about what I watch because I know some of that happens. But it means that when people come to talk to me, I can love them without judgment because I know that Jesus died for that. And I know that that is the enemy trying to take people out. We must love as he loved us. But if we don't know that we are loved by his amazing holy love, covered by his blood, bought by his death on the cross. If we don't know that, in my opinion, I think it's very difficult to love then without judgment. My invitation to all of us, I always include myself, in this, you know, God, I, I'm not standing here perfect. But my inv invitation to all of us is to just, if you can do it with me, if you want, you can close your eyes, don't get distracted, is to just say, Holy Spirit, would you come and show me where my heart is, where I've grown, grown cold, would you put your fire back in? where I've been disappointed. I give you that disappointment. I was going to talk on waiting on the promises of God. Sometimes his promises take a while and we get disappointed and then we get cold in our That's a whole other. <laughs> please don't partner with the enemy. Please, please don't partner with the enemy. And the best way to know whether you are or not is to ask the Holy Spirit. He is our counselor. He is our wisdom. He can darn well answer those questions. 
if we ask him. I want to be ready. I want to be ready if, if, if the Lord is going to start doing a move. And by the way, we are hearing of these moves in different places around the world of extraordinary salvations. I've been hearing them f of, about them through the Catch the Fire movement, and I'm absolutely certain that they are happening in other places. It's not a, oh, I hope it happens. It's a, he is coming. And we need to be ready. We need to be ready. If you had asked me, say, 10 years ago, I probably could have given you all lo lots of things to do. But with the journey that God has taken me on, um, life has ju just gets more simple and more simple and more simple. Know his love. Worship him as much as within my capacity to do. Know how much he loves me how much he covers me because I make lots of mistakes and get it wrong. And ask for his love for other people without judgment. I am not the judge. I am not the judge. Jesus is the judge and he will judge whenever he does it. Revelation. Do you know all we are required to do is love people into the kingdom? But if you want to love people into the kingdom, you need to know what this says about it. If you don't know your Bible, I'm going to really encourage you to start reading it. Because it does say in the end days that all sorts of people will begin preaching deception and going slightly off or whatever, it's kind of like in Revelations. Know your Bible. There's lots of great Bible notes out there. Holy Spirit will lead you, but we do need to know this for ourselves. I love it. I, I, li I live by this. Going back to my dream um, with coming out of the water, crying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Um, the next night, and if you're into dream interpretation, if you dream about something twice, it's like even more take note. But the next night, I arrived at Bath City Church as it was then, and I met up with Rosie. And I said to Rosie, I know you have a conference here, and I'm here to serve. And I know where John is going to speak and where Heidi is going to speak. And I know what's going to happen. I think it's significant Heidi Baker is coming this next weekend. So if you haven't booked on, I'd really encourage you to come. She carries something. She carries something. If you can't, listen to it, if, if that's possible. That's all I'm going to say. I've got so much to say, but I think that's all I'm supposed to say. But I'm going to give you an invitation. 
Um, I'll wait till Andy comes out. If, if you feel like your life has been full of some distraction and that you have allowed other things in life um, that have taken you off allowing the thing to be the thing or God to be God and that we are really here to follow him and we're here to help him fulfill his purposes Christ died for all, not just us in this room. He died for everybody out there, and he longs for everybody to come home. And all we are to do is to bring them home. We're just helping them come home. How many of you are up for helping people come home? Don't get distracted from helping people come home. It's not difficult, just love them. Scripture says be able to give an account. Help them come home. Andy, I don't mind what you play. You just decide. I'm going to ask you to stand. I'm not going to do a call for ministry at the front. I think it's a lovely day to be out enjoying lunch with everybody. Um, I, I feel like you can do your own business with Jesus where you are. I'm just going to lead you in a prayer and then we'll go back into worship. If you agree with my prayer, pray it along with me. If you don't, that's perfectly fine. Jesus, here I am. I recognize that I have been saved by your death on the cross. That I've been bought by your blood shed for me. I recognize that I am made in the image of God. Beautiful, with beautiful characteristics. And yet with a mission. I recognize that you have given me a mission to love people home. Would you give me the words? Would you give me the eyes of love? Would you give me a heart that is so full of compassion that I would embrace anybody in front of me because they too have been bought by you. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the one that created me. You are the one that bought me. I am yours and you are mine. Holy Spirit, would you deepen my understanding because I need it. And would I know the full embrace of the Father because I need it. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to go back into a time of worship and either me or you or Andy will close the meeting. But if you do need to leave, feel free to leave. Um, it's been lovely to have you here and have a great week. Bye.
what a morning for a great word. Just have a real sense before we go that there might be one or more people here who say, thank you, Jenny. And I get that. But you just don't know what I've done. And you feel too bad for God. But His grace will meet you just where you are. And His goodness outweighs your badness. And He took it all so that you don't have to suffer with that. Just give Him a chance. Watch what He does. And if you need to talk about that or you need prayer for that, because you're struggling with that, we'll have some precious people here to talk with you and pray with you. Don't leave here carrying that because we've heard today you don't need to. So you could come for prayer down here. You could come for coffee here. You could do both. But either way, have a wonderful rest of your day and weekend. We'll be back here next week and it will be great to see you. Thank you, Jesus, for a wonderful morning. Bless these people with your glorious presence as we go out into the sun. We take you as the sun with us. Hallelujah. Have fun, everybody. God bless you.